Hello everybody, Daniel here, unsurprisingly, back again with the fourth installation of Pokemon Coliseum, the LP. Remember last time, the big dude with the fluffy hair? Yep, we're moving on from him, and his three cohorts are each, we are one of them, are each hiding the exit to the city. I've chosen the red one because the Pokemon you get varies depending on which one you decide to defeat. In terms of shadow Pokemon, that is. Obviously, um, red, blue and green should give you an indication as to what the theme should be. If you hadn't picked that up, it'll be fire, water, and grass. So, as you saw by the uh, released Pokémon on his side, there's a Quilava, and I can guarantee you now that's a shadow. As you can see now, there we go, nice and purpley, quite pretty, really. But um, yeah, this battle is actually surprisingly difficult because Quilava is infinitely more powerful than Makahita. I mean, Makahita, as I said in the last episode, is shit. It is proven somewhat <laughs> in a minute or two and I will show you. Unfortunately this is I'm going to bring up just while I'm at it and if you're playing this along with me it is much more difficult to level Espeon up the Numbreon because the AI has a habit of targeting Espeon more, especially on XD it's got to be said, not as bad on this and also because Espeon has no bulk so you'll notice that <laughs> your Umbreon levels up a hell of a lot quicker than your Espeon which is unfair considering Umbreon starts at a high level anyway. But yes, I get a lovely burn there as you know, my luck can run through LPs. LP luck is if it can happen and it's negative, it will happen for you. Shadow Rush, as you can see, I did quite a lot really. Unsurprisingly, considering how bad its physical defence is. And unfortunately, Psywave does minimum does the uh, average or better, which means I lose my Espeon already. I sped the battle up because it takes quite a long time, I can guarantee you. The double sped music does sound weird though. You won't be able to hear it that much, but for me in my headset that's pretty weird. And that's how bad that Makahita is. It has thick fat, so it takes half damage from fire type moves and it still died in one hit. Unfortunately that means I'm down to one Pokemon. I can't bring anything else in. And I've just got to make this last out. This is why I sped it up, because otherwise we would be here till Christmas. Blah 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 blah. He's dug underground. Die actually. I can tell you now, because I've done them in batches, that will become very, very useful in time. Very, well, probably in two or three episodes of time. Probably three. Anyway, I can slow it back down, so you can probably guess what's going to happen next. Yeah, I'm going to slow it down for the Pokemon. Being caught. I suppose I'd better quickly explain and summarise Quilava briefly, if somehow people don't know anything about it. Quilava obviously evolves into Typhlosion. I would highly recommend any of the starters in this game. I, uh, the three Gen 2 starters as Pokemon to have in your team for this game. With particular um, kudos going towards Typhlosion and Frogator, I wouldn't recommend Meganium so much. Although it is quite useful for being the support alongside a Pokemon that's sweeping. I don't just mean that in terms of general speaking, I mean that in terms of catching Shadow Pokemon. That He's just quickly explained to you what their Shadow Pokemon are, artificially closing the hearts. I have no idea how they do that. It's not really explained very well how they do it. Don't ask how. It's Pokemon logic. We can open their hearts. Now I will explain a bit more about this in a uh, future battle. It will be in this episode. Don't worry yourselves. Don't panic! Don't panic! That guy seems to be panicking. He's... Why is he hiding inside the door? Some kids these days. Anyway, I'm going to skip that. Here we are, <laughs> back to the map. And we're going to have to go to the new, only new place, the construction lot. It's going to be very impressive, apparently. Let's get on our kind of half tractor, half motorbike, half unicycle thing. It's very pretty, as you may be able to see. Although the um, timber girders there didn't look particularly good. Whoa, hold it there, this is a construction site. It's not a safe place to be. No shit, Sherlock, hence you're wearing solid hard hats. I thought I'd just talk to all of them for you, just to show you, and get a bit of insight into what's going on here. All they need to do now is clean up, and that should be sorted. Yet you can't enter the front door. Uh, go figure, I suppose. Been wording, w been wording, been working hard, he has. It's been a massive job. There's going to be a Coliseum on top, so we definitely want to come back here at some point. I thought I'd just quickly scout around, see if there was any um, hidden items. There aren't, that you can see. So we shall leave, and see where else we can go. Oh look, conveniently, there's a new place. Pirate Town, or Pirate Town, I don't care how you want me to pronounce that one. This town 
you will be in a lot and I will be in as a result a lot it is very very important and integral to the game storyline there's a brief overview of what it looks like and it looks like a piece of shit and it's meant to oh what's this conversation Mr. Johnson give me a break he doesn't know anything about what? I wonder what's going on that better be true if you're trying to call me I'll know about it look how he looks like a typical British rosser anyway <laughs> yeah, that's true. Whole fact. Yeah, you can tell it's a British Rosa. He's been way too soft, and he walks like he's, like his character's pants. Like all these characters do, frankly. Heh <laughs> What a nitwit. Of course, I haven't got a thing to tell you. What a bad man. He lied to a policeman. I hope he gets sent to prison. Better talk to. Him. What are you looking at? What the fuck accent was that? Anyway, if you don't want to get hurt, leave now. Hint, hint. No, no, we can't leave. We've got to do the game. We've got to do the LP. If I just quit now, you'd be worried, wouldn't you? I just thought I'd have a quick overview there. And I'm going to bring the Shadow Pokemon to the front. Because when I do the next battle, I want to explain a lot about them. We'll talk to some of the NPCs around, just so I can give you a bit of an insight into the town, and just so you know a bit about it. The buildings are all over the shop in terms of design and colour. What a tit. He just ran. I like how when he runs into us, we don't flinch at all. And he looks like he's been hit in the face by a slinky. There's been evidence of strange Pokemon news. These kids nowadays with their Pokegen stuff. Ugh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he thought we were the chief, though. He's proving that he's quite dim. He upholds the law. Upholds used very, very loosely. He's the chief. I suppose I better talk to him. He wants us to leave. Wow, that's comforting. H Hello, welcome to the place I look after. Get the fuck out! These are jail cells, Kel Surprise. If you click on the, and obviously in this case it'll say the door is locked, it actually brings you up to the menu so you could use a key perhaps, maybe, if you're going to be able to. But as you can probably guess at this point, we don't have any keys. Oh, hang on! We recognise those two. Well, what? Not you two again. Listen, you have to promise. Don't tell me B that we're hiding out here, okay? After we blew our last chance, we couldn't go back, so we just turned ourselves in for stealing that truck, and here we are. If we stay here, you'll be safe. Um, um not really. I wouldn't trust yourself with Johnson. Although that's probably why they put themselves in, because they could probably just negotiate to get back out when they want to. You thugs must be Mirabee's newest recruits! Well, shoot, beat it! I don't have any money to give you! What? Paranoid people. As if I look like a Mirabee clone, I look badass. Are you trying to sell me something? Well, sorry, I don't need anything. I don't know why she sounded like that. Pirate Town is renowned for thugs, roughnecks, you know, tomfoolery of all the negative type. And he mentioned someone called Duking there, so we'd better go and try and find him. That is a rubbish signpost. That is rubbish. This is the fortune telling building. I shouldn't need to come here very often. But the fortune teller in this game, to my knowledge, from what I can remember, is basically the place you come when you get stuck and she'll give you advice on what to do next. She also has ridiculous hair, like most things in this game. Find what you seek, be it an object, person, or look. Welcome to Fatine Fortune Telling Bullshit. Yes, her name is Fatine. Is she a fat teenager? Something tells me she's too old. But she is a midget, so she might fatidge it. Not very catchy. Well, I can't see that going on. Anyway, this is. The G building, apparently. No, this is where Duking is. That big, f burly, muscular bloke, inverted commas, is Duking, end commas. Go to the Coliseum. You can go and battle there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and look out. Nobody's supposed to get by me. There's nothing special behind the bookshelf. Hint, hint, hint. Oh, actually, there doesn't seem to be any, secret, any secrets behind these bookcases. Maybe it's true. Maybe not. We'll find out in due course, folks. Anyway, we've gone through about half the buildings now in the uh, town. Let's talk to this dude. Yo, your outfit's kind of weird, but you're a trainer too, aren't you? Of course I am. Everybody is. We have sheet battles rather than exchanging sheet. Exchanging greetings. I'm mixing words up again. Yeah, this is the battle I wanted to show you that explained uh, the Shadow Pokemon. If you can notice, there is a purple bar below the health stat. The lighter part on the right hand side of the bar is the emptiness of the bar and obviously the darker bit is how full it is. 
The uh, less full the bar gets, the more friendly the Pokemon gets, which means it will show you more moves that it had hidden before. It will show you what's, what nature it has, which is one very, very annoying thing about this game at the time, was that you didn't know the nature of the Pokemon until you'd looked after it for a while. So this was not a very, very efficient way of finding new Pokemon for your Ruby, Sapphire or Emerald games. And you've seen a couple of other things there. Hyper Mode. I probably briefly explained this before. Hyper Mode, you get critical hits more often. You can't use items on them. Um, to call them out to make them feel better, nah, you to get out of hyper mode, you just talk to them like that, and it comes to its senses. The good thing about this is that it knocks the bar down a lot. Unfortunately, the bad thing about this is you've got to waste a turn. And what you'll see is, they, are, they can enter hyper mode at random. It can be at any time, and it is always the time you least need it. It is pretty much a guarantee. <laughs> And also, as you can see here, I keep leaving things on minuscule amounts of health. So smart, you can't see it on the health bar. That's another problem with this game in terms of its health, its graphical limitations. Although it looks quite good as a game, the health bar is shite, because you can't tell very accurately when it gets into the red how much health a Pokemon has. But compared to most of the problems that some of these games have, that is a tip of an iceberg. Anyway, unsurprisingly, Makahita died again. I told you it was shit. By the way, I never gave you a recommendation score for Quillara, did I? I would probably give it at least a 4 out of 5 out of recommendation. I would probably give Croconaw is an alternative. That's probably a 3. And Bayleaf is probably a 2. Bayleaf is a bad typing to be defense, to be defensive Pokemon, and it's really not very good anyway. Game Freak blatantly didn't like it when they played it in-game for Gold and Silver and Crystal, by the way they laid the gyms out. And the fact it gets no good moves. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would avoid Bayleaf if you can. And you definitely can. This is the hotel. Now, the problem with Pyrite Town at this stage is that you can't get to a Pokemon Center. And because I cannot be arsed editing it, I'm just going to spend my 100 Poke Dollars and heal here. I will quickly show you the hotel while I'm at it. The Super Grand Hotel! So sorry, I better get the marketing terms right. Shouldn't you be at the construction site? It, should, it would have been done by now if you were there. SMH, SMH. These are the rooms. It's actually quite nice that you can see all the rooms in the hotel. It's also quite nice how it's sort of hub shaped, so you can see almost all the rooms for every other room. It wasn't that long ago when Duking was the man in Pyrite, but now, right out there, weird Mirror B and his stooges ride herd over the town. I wonder what Mirror B did to Duking to make this switch happen. I suppose we'll have to find out in due course, and I can't get out. <laughs> Stupid yucky, can't get me out of the building. Yeah, turning round, as I said, was difficult in this game. There's nothing in there. Oh, great, I've just noticed that the camera is glitching slightly. No, that everybody will mention that. I can't do anything about it, just ignore it. If I could have sorted anything with it out, I would have done by now, wouldn't I? Anyway, you've now seen the hotel. That's a fair length time of video. I shall end now, and I shall probably do a new video for the week after so seven days time talk to you later chaps and lasses bitches and hoes ta -ra.